Hi, friends. Apparently, the Sunday installment of the reading was too long, and so I'll shorten it up. This is the second half of Chapter 2 of Henry and Ribsy by Beverly Cleary. When we left off, Ribsy had just attacked the garbage man, growling and snapping while he was trying to take the garbage, and so he left it there. Oops. All right, here we go. As soon as the garbage man drove on, Ribsy stopped growling. He looked at Henry and wagged his tail as if he expected to be praised for what he had done. Henry was too stunned to say anything for a minute. Then he said crossly, now look what you've done. You've got us both in trouble, that's what. Scooter was careful to stay a few feet away from Ribsy. I wouldn't get too close to him if I were you, he said. He looks pretty ferocious. Henry looked sadly at Ribsy, who rolled over on his back with his four feet in the air to show that he wanted his stomach scratched. See, he isn't a bit ferocious. Henry was anxious to defend his dog, even though he knew he couldn't convince Scooter. You just saw him, didn't you? asked Scooter. But that wasn't like Ribsy, protested Robert. He's a good dog. Oh, I don't know, said Scooter. You never can tell about dogs. Sometimes they get mean. It's not my dog, said Henry, trying frantically to think of an explanation for Ribsy's behavior. I suppose, Ribsy thought, you went to the barber to have the foxtail taken out of your ears, and he looked just like the garbage man, jeered Scooter. Besides, the garbage man doesn't wear a white coat. He wears blue overalls. Leave it to old Scooter to spoil an explanation. Yeah, I guess that's right, Henry answered dejectedly. How did he get mixed up in these things anyway? Now everyone in Clickitat Street would know about Ribsy. And then Henry realized he had another problem. The garbage. The whole week's collection was still in the can in the backyard. What was he going to do with the garbage he had to take out until then? That evening, Henry put off telling his mother and father what had happened until they were washing dishes and he was cutting up horse meat for Ribsy. They both looked serious. I can't understand it, said Mr. Mrs. Huggins. He's always been such a good-natured animal. If he really is getting to be ferocious, maybe we should tie him up. Oh, Mom, no, he hates to be tied up. And anyway, he always chews through the rope. There must be some reason for his not liking the garbage man, said Mr. Huggins. I wonder if the garbage man ever kicked him. Gee, Dad, do you think so? Henry asked eagerly. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't do that, said Mrs. Huggins. Henry was anxious to change the subject before anything more was said about tying Ribsy in the backyard. He lifted the container out of the step-on garbage can and started to go out. Then, with a groan, he remembered that the can outside was already full. Oh, jeepers, Mom, what will I do with the garbage? He asked. You'll just have to manage the best you can. Squish it down in the can somehow, Mrs. Huggins wiped the can, a cup and sighed. Henry, I don't know how you get mixed up in things the way you do. You old dog, you, Henry said crossly to Ribsy, who was sniffing the can. It'll be all your fault if I don't get to go fishing. Ribsy sat down and scratched a flea, while Henry stared gloomily at the garbage can. There was one thing he was sure of. When he grew up and had a boy of his own, he would never ask him to take out the garbage. Unfortunately, that week turned out to be unusually warm. Tuesday evening, when Henry and his mother and father were eating dinner, a breeze moved the curtains at the dining room window. P.U., said Henry, catching a whiff of overripe garbage from the can below. Never mind the sound effects, said Mr. Huggins, as he got up from the table to close the window. It was even warmer in the kitchen when Henry's mother and father were washing and wiping dishes. Mrs. Huggins had to put down the dish towel several times to swat flies. Henry fed Ribsy in silence. He dreaded the trip to the garbage can. When he could put it off no longer, he picked up the container and started out, followed closely by Ribsy. This time, he arranged the day's refuse a handful at a time around the pile. Then he balanced the lid on top. Oh, the whole thing looked and smelled terrible. On Wednesday, when Henry walked reluctantly down the back steps with the garbage, he saw Mr. Grumby standing on his back porch. 
As Henry put the lid off the can, Mr. Grumby looked across the driveway. So that's where the smell is coming from, he said. I'm afraid it is, Mr. Grumby. I heard about Rig Riz Ribsy tearing the seat out of the garbage man's overalls, said Mr. Grumby. Jeepers, thought Henry miserably. The story's not only going around the neighborhood, it's getting worse. Henry grew more and more discouraged. On Thursday, after he had piled the garbage on top of the can and replaced the lid as well as he could, he got an apple box out of the garage and climbed up on it and stepped carefully onto the lid. He stamped his feet a few times to work the garbage down into the can and then jumped up and down. It helped some, but not much. On Friday, Henry suggested to his mother that they buy a new garbage can. She didn't think this was a good idea. Then Henry decided to take the garbage out before dinner when the container was not so full. He distributed the milk cartons and carrot tops as well as he could on the heap and was jumping up and down on the lid when Robert and Scooter came up the driveway looking for him. What are you doing up there? Robert demanded. Look at it, Scooter. Did you ever see so much garbage? P.U., said Scooter, staying on the driveway well away from Ribsy, who was rolling on the grass to scratch his back. Never mind the sound effects. Henry jumped to the ground. It was all right to, for him to criticize his own garbage, but he didn't want anyone else to do it. Come on, let's go out in front. Yes, let's, agreed Scooter. P.U. We're going to stop there. This is a longer chapter than I thought. What is going to happen to Henry's garbage? Hey, this will help us remember our lines and spaces, though. Empty garbage before dad lets our treble clef lines. Yay! Have a good night.